Hello everyone, how are you doing guys? Well, Daniel De Costa here and in this video I'm gonna share with you a little bit uh, about my workflow. I am creating this character here from Pempegal concept, concept from Pempegal. It's the Jing Luo, Jing Luo character, I think her name is Jing Luo. And Hey guys, just to remind you that we have new premium course every month uploaded on Udemy and Skillshare, where you can assess a lot of different content for you learn, improve and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now, new workflows, techniques, tips and tricks, and now it learning from industry veterans and experts. You can check the description down here and Skillshare is offering one free month trial to the premium membership. With this membership you are going to be able to access all of our course and watch and learn all of these amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check our course down here below. I am creating this character for, for my, my mentorship my, for the Brazilian students, mentorship here at Brazil and well guys uh, we have a lot of ways to bake normal map ambient occlusion but usually what we what we usually we do it's send the the full mesh to the substance painter for example and bake it it's a good way of course let me show you for example here I have the normal map and ambient occlusion but sometimes we're gonna have some problems because, for example, for hair, I don't like to to have the the ambient occlusion on these parts, on these parts. I, I confess you that I don't like for this hairstyle that it's more like uh, for night. Yeah, I prefer a clean ambient occlusion. Usually, I like of the ambient occlusion just on the cavities. So what usually I do is go to ZBrush, for example, and I like to separate the, the elements of the hair. So for example, here I have the low poly and also, let me show you, also I have the high poly in the same, on the same position. So why I like to create folder to it? Because, for example, if I wanna change the high poly and low poly, in the same time I just use the transpose set. The transpose set, I can move this both guys. Oops, let me click on this guy here, and now go to transpose set. Now it's working well, and I can change the low poly and high poly let me turn off this guys here yeah so for example i can move this guy and i have certain that i have the high poly and low poly in same on the same position it's the same thing with the other parts so it's very easy i can change these parts for example here transpose set it's very easy to change and i like to do that because it's better for me to bake the element without uh, I have the the shadows and the artifacts uh, overlapping the other mesh. For example, I can avoid the problem with the bakes. This mesh uh, bring a shadow artifacts on this mesh. So to do that, usually I like to bake separated mesh. We could use the this option here, bake mesh maps. For example, we could use the this option. Uh, low poly mesh set out the low poly with the suffix underline low and high and use the match switch to by mesh name but for me change all the mesh names one by one it's uh, I, I prefer make different so I like to use this other way let me show you I like to let me create a new select and I'm gonna select for example this uh, low separated usually I like to create two folders two, fo two files so for example I have this guy and I have exported the high poly in the same position how I 
how I show at you here. Let me select your ZBrush. So for example, in this position. So let me close here very fast. And here I can bake the meshes and add my high poly here. Let me select just normal map and I can add the high poly hair separated too. So it will load for us. And I love this version of Substance Painter from the 9.0 version. We have this real time baking visualization. It's very, very awesome because you can see the problems uh, with uh, surface or the cage. It's awesome. Really, 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 really awesome. So let me load for the first time this it's a little more slow, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is uh, set the initializing to 16, and here I'm gonna set it to K okay just to bake it. Let him wait a little bit more. And here we have the high poly, and it's very, very awesome. I love this bake visualization. So I can set 0 0.05. Mm, that's cool. Awesome. And basically what I can do is just bake it. For example, I can bake here the normal map. It's very, very round. So I really love this, this process. Of course, to get a good normal map, you need to have uh, a good um, red topology, a good UV mapping. It's terribly important. So for example, now here, let me show you, I can return. Return to paint mode. It's awesome. And how I have this normal map from Mesh Hair One, what I need to do is just go in edit and bring my together mesh. So, for example, I have the other file, Calad Hair Together Low, where I have this, this mesh here on the correct position. So, it's just select and press OK. So now I have this guy here and just I can select normal map and select the normal map bake at. So for example, now I have the normal map. It's very, very useful. And also if necessary, you can go to export texture. And here you can switch the output template and select the, the mesh maps. When you're gonna select the mesh maps, you're gonna export all these elements. So it's very, very helpful because for example, here I have the ma these maps exported. So it's very helpful because for example, I would, I, I can load the complete character. So for example, here, let me show you, okay, it can be, and let me show you this new, or let me, Create a new and load here. Uh, let me see here. K T and select here. Kate had hair. I can switch here to two K and load this file. And well, I miss out the, the the elements here, the, the mesh, the mesh maps. But for example, if I select the default material that it's here hair, that's cool and. I have exported these maps, so basically it's just drag and drop here, and I can switch to texture here and can set to current session and import it. It's very, very help helpful because it's a very easy workflow to follow and make changes. And now just I can drag and drop here, normal map, ambient occlusion, so curvature, let me see, this is curvature, yeah, curvature, <clears throat> the position, word space normal, position, thickness, oops, thickness here. So it's very, very helpful because sometimes you can make uh, the texture separated or bake separated, then you can load the complete project, complete file and import these elements. For example, it's the same thing for the head I have here. 
export that they had and I can drag and drop these files set to texture here and import to current section and here I have this element so I can set the normal map here that's cool and ambient occlusion too and the other maps of course it's extremely extremely awesome and you can work very fast with that so let me let me load the the other file that i am doing the texture so this is the workflow that usually i like to use because it's very fast and i can make very very changes very fast too so here it's going the the, the progress let me change here the field of view let me reduce it a little bit yeah it's better so it's very very fast so here i have the head let's go come on i have these maps if i want to make some change into the photoshop to the normal map or ambient occlusion or paint it it's very fast too so i can make this change send and import uh, export and import these maps it's very 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 helpful for us and uh, it's a, a great great uh, tip that usually I like to use so is it guys I hope you have enjoyed it just uh, to share a little bit about my workflow and maybe can be very helpful for you if you have some problems uh, when you need to work with a lot of meshes together and, and you need make more clean ambient occlusion or clean normal map you can use this workflow well guys is it and see you in the next tutorial